This week on The Aviators, we take a close look at one of the most overlooked parts of an aircraft, its tires. Then check out the view from the tallest air traffic control tower in the world. And finally, we examine one big reason why flying is as safe as it is, with a lesson in maintenance at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. One of the single most distinguishing features of any city is its skyline, a cluster of towers and high-rises that reach toward the clouds and effectively become the fingerprint through which the city's visual identity is often defined. A prime example of this effect can be applied to the city of Vancouver, British Columbia, whose prominent buildings adorning the edges of Coal Harbour have become virtually synonymous with their place of residence. Taking a closer look at the construction along this coast reveals that one of its tallest properties consists of far more than initially meets the eye. Here, perched comfortably atop the prominent Granville Square skyscraper, rests the Vancouver Harbour Control Tower, a lookout that's tough to spot from the ground, but distinguished for its ability to observe both the skies above and the waters below. While a control tower with a vantage point overlooking sky and water may not seem all that significant at first blush, the placement of the Vancouver Harbour Control Tower actually speaks to what makes it so unique, as it monitors some of the highest levels of seaplane activity in the world. But that's not the only characteristic that sets this particular facility apart from its peers. The first thing that makes us very unique, we are the highest tower in the world. So we don't actually get the uh, the record for that because we're not a freestanding air traffic control tower. We're sitting on top of uh, a previously existing building, but at 465 feet above uh, sea level, above the surface that we serve, we're the highest in the world. David Weston, the control tower's unit operations specialist, supervises a team of seven controllers at this elevated facility with skyscrapers to one side and an impressive backdrop of mountains on the other. While the spectacular view afforded by the 200 square foot lookout is nothing short of breathtaking, if you look far enough back in time, the windows from this control tower would have provided an altogether different view. Back in the early 1970s, the tower was actually situated in Vancouver's Stanley Park within a structure that was much lower to the ground. Given the need for a clear view past all possible obstructions, the opportunity to relocate to the top floor of what remains one of the city's tallest buildings provided an ideal fit for the tower. Now, with 466 feet and 30 stories separating summit from soil, the view from the tower has cleared almost every obstacle in order to better assist aircraft in overcoming obstacles of their own. So many tall buildings around us, and there's uh, so many different uh, obstructions to our line of sight uh, that you wouldn't have at a normal airport, and that's what makes it uh, important for us to be up high and looking down on our traffic. If we were down low right now, we'd have a very difficult time seeing across the water and, and seeing where our traffic is coming from because the, the buildings and the, the rest of the geography would block our view. Privately owned and operated by NAV Canada, the tower serves Vancouver Harbour Water Airport, itself adding to a decidedly unconventional aerodrome through the very components it's missing. Rather than the runways, ramps and taxiways that we're so used to seeing at typical land-based airports, here the incoming and outgoing traffic must face the challenge of maneuvering on and around the water while at the same time minding the obstacles of surrounding buildings, treetops, mountains, and watercraft. So one of the things that's obviously very different, there is no runway, right? So we, um, we spell out the runway. So when it comes time to choose a, uh, a departure runway, we suggest to the aircraft that they point themselves at the best possible direction to avoid boats, logs, waves, and as always, as much into the wind as possible. With exclusive oversight of the harbour's two air terminals, one situated on each side of the tower, the station maintains control of all aircraft movements in the control zone. 
On one side, the Helijet operated Vancouver Harbour heliport provides a floating surface for extensive helicopter activity that places it among the busiest public heliports in the country. With room for four choppers at a time, the heliport facilitates numerous Sikorsky S-76 and Bell Long Ranger helicopters flying between Vancouver's harbour and the capital city of Victoria. The second terminal generates the majority of its traffic from Harbour Air Group, the largest seaplane company in the world. The most frequently flown seaplanes include a combination of de Havilland DHC-2 Beavers, DH-3T turbine otters, and DHC-6 twin otters, all of which fly to surrounding harbours and small communities along the BC coast. But as with all aerial transport, the frequency of flights is typically determined by, you guessed it, the weather. When it comes to figuring out how busy a day is going to be here at the harbour, there's a lot of different things that we consider. Um, so at uh, many of our other NAV Canada facilities, uh, a poor weather day uh, might mean that you're going to be busier. A poor weather day might mean that you're not going to have anything to do at all. For us at the harbour, a good weather day means you're going to be busier. A poor weather day, uh, you still might be busy, but you're not going to see as much traffic. Uh, and in the summer months when we have cruise ships here, cruise ships bring in a lot of tourists to the city and a lot of tourists like to get in airplanes and go have a look at, uh, at Vancouver from the sky. Uh, so if there's a lot of cruise ships in town, yeah, you're bound to have a pretty busy afternoon. Due to the high volume of tourism at the harbour, pilots must take into consideration the generous amount of marine traffic in the surrounding area. And while the controllers lack the ability to communicate directly with the various cruise ships, yachts, harbour patrol and other watercraft, their bird's eye view can provide helpful suggestions to pilots in order to prevent any unfortunate collisions from occurring in the waters. This is mainly a concern for seaplane pilots though, as helicopters coming and going are able to remain in the air until just before landing and simply ascend from the heliport without having to dodge the boats on the water. Although conflict may be experienced with much larger container carriers, which despite the wide range of the harbor's control zone, can still manage to be a factor. Keeping all this traffic apart becomes increasingly difficult when visibility is reduced, and even with years of experience, controllers must rely on an advanced radar system to ensure that the highest control tower operates at an equally high level of safety. We use radar at Vancouver Harbour. We've used radar here for a very long time. Uh, NAV Canada recognized a long time ago the need for radar here. So Harbour Tower is one of the first uh, towers to receive some of NAV Canada's uh, software for presenting that information. But back in earlier times, uh, we only had radar, uh, which is an older technology, and it's very difficult to put that technology everywhere. It's a very large piece of equipment, uh, and so it's generally only contained uh, on, on major airport fields. However, as buildings get higher around us at the harbour, we have less of an ability to see traffic that's coming, uh, approaching from different directions. And so, with recent advances in technology, NAV Canada was able to go and purchase and install a new system called multilateration. In the harbour, it's a system of 11 sensors, and we're able to perch these uh, small sensors on top of other buildings or on cell phone towers or, or what have you. And so, we've put a bunch of those all the way around uh, the airspace that we monitor. And that equipment is able to listen to transponders, the radios on aircraft that uh, transmit who an aircraft is and, and what their identity is. With all the components that contribute to the Harbour Control Tower's continued success, thanks in no small measure to its team of controllers keeping an eye on the traffic below, its perch at the top of Vancouver's skyline couldn't be a more ideal match for its unique environment. And while it may seem as though all air traffic control towers are alike in their efforts to separate aircraft and maintain safety in the skies, every now and again there's one that stands apart from the rest. And in this case, getting noticed is what it's all about. It certainly does make it unique to work here. When you see pictures of downtown Vancouver, a lot of them contain our little towers that perched, perched along the skyline amongst all the other buildings. Whereas, I mean, there's very recognizable airports uh, all around the world that have very unique control towers that make them recognizable, but those are standalone features that make those airports recognizable. Whereas here, our little tower appears in almost everybody's pictures. 